All right, guys. So in my opinion, one of the main themes of 2021 is going to be the so-called Great Reset. Now, the Great Reset is a global initiative to rethink capitalism and create a more sustainable world based off radical progressive policies. Now, when we think about the Great Reset, a lot of people think about it in just terms of capitalism. However, it extends beyond just capitalism. The Great Reset also includes the Great Reset of history, particularly in the United States, because a lot of people see capitalism as a promotion of white supremacy. The argument is that capitalism has mostly benefited the white race in America. Therefore, a part of resetting capitalism also has to be the reset of history, or at least that's my interpretation of it. And as you can see from this next story, this is starting to trickle down to all levels of society. This is something we see President Trump fighting against the renaming of the military bases from Confederate generals uh, to other names. We see people bringing out statues of Confederate generals slash racist figures in history. And it's showing up on all levels at this point. And this is something that we need to pay attention to because in my opinion, it is a part of the Great Reset. But before we get into that, my name is Greg Foreman and you're watching a black conservative perspective. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective, aka a leftist worst nightmare. You can also follow me on Twitter at GForemanBCP. Let's get it. All right, guys. So in woke news today, a judge rules that a black defendant shouldn't have to stand trial in a courtroom decorated with portraits of mostly white judges. A judge in Virginia ruled that a courtroom lined with portraits of white judges could impede a black defendant's right to a fair trial and ordered that the Im images be removed before his next court appearance. Fairfax County Circuit Court Judge David uh, Bermhard wrote in an opinion this week that having people of color stand in uh, courtrooms where the images on display are overwhelmingly of white judges could signal that the justice system is biased against them. Now, my question is, how many black people did they poll and ask this question? Or was this just another example of the super liberal, super woke mob trying to speak for black people and tell black people what they should and should not be offended by? That's my question here. Now, though some people may see the portraits as a way to honor past judges for their service, Bernhard wrote, Others may interpret them as another sign the judicial system is not designed to truly deliver justice, whether that's intended message or not. His opinion centers on the case of Terrence Ship Jr., who is accused of evading police and assault on a law enforcement officer, among other counts. The Washington Post reported Ship is set to appear before a jury on January 4th, 2021. Now, again, my question is, did they ask Mr. Ship? who was evading a police officer and again, allegedly assault, had assault on a police officer. Did they ask him whether or not this was offensive to him? Did they ask him whether or not this may make him believe that the justice system is biased against him? Right? That's my question. And I find it hard to believe that somebody who would evade the police and <laughs> potentially assault a police officer as well, would get so triggered by the fact that they're in a courtroom with portraits of white judges. I'm not sure if I buy the argument that this person is going to be triggered or uncomfortable in a courtroom just because they have pictures of white judges. Now, when I go to libraries, when you know I go outside, again, I live in the South, I already told you guys, there's streets, monuments, graveyards, a ton of things named after confederate leaders and soldiers i am not so soft that i am going to be triggered by names for the most part a lot of people for the most part don't even know what these names mean they don't know what stonewall street who that was named after they don't know that they don't know who fort bragg was named after they don't know any of that only thing they know it's the name of the street. The only people that are getting triggered by are the leftist liberals who went to college and got taught by the white liberals that everything is racist and that society is against you. 
And then they go back and they tell other people this same story and they regurgitate this information. And now all of a sudden, everybody's offended and triggered by street names, portraits, things like that. Right? If I go to a library and there are portraits of a white person, that's a historical figure. Am I supposed to be triggered? Because this is where it's going to go. Because the argument is that, well, these don't belong in public. These belong in a museum. At some point, you're going to go to a museum. Somebody will say, I'm offended by the history in this museum. We should take this down. And the leftist woke mob, mob is going to say, okay, we can't even have this in museums anymore. That, that's where it's going to go. Again, we can't even have former judges in courtrooms anymore. Now, my thing is this. If you really feel this certain type of way, why erase history? Erasing history just means you're doomed to repeat it. Why don't you just build on top of that? Continue to build on history, right? Every street, every city in America has a Martin Luther King Street. There's a Malcolm X Street. There's all types of streets named after black leaders, okay? Why don't you just put some portraits up with some black judges? Now, if you haven't had any black judges, I don't know. Maybe at some point, if there's a black judge, you should put some portraits up of black judges in the courtroom. Balance it out over time, right? Maybe that's a solution instead of taking down those. I think it's important to have a complete picture of history for people to understand that everything was not perfect, that we have evolved in society and that we have gotten better over time. And the only way to realize that and to appreciate that is to face history for what it is and understand that this is what used to exist. Now, some people will say, you know, putting up statues, you know, in public places is honoring people. I'm not necessarily sure if I agree with that. You know, I just look at these statues as historical monuments. I look at them as public museums. That's the way I see it. But then again, I'm not like a lot of people that's easily triggered and emotional about this stuff because I see this as another way to perpetuate black victimhood. They say black people have to be treated with kid gloves, right? And that's what really bothers me about this because they try to say it's in good intentions but i really don't think this is good intentions i think this is more babying and control of black people from the liberals look at this guy i mean this is the guy who is trying to tell you how to think and how to feel about slavery and history this this is the dude that's telling you that right it, this is this is not you know, a black person telling you this or, you know, somebody else like, no, th this is the face of people that are trying to tell us that history is racist and that as a black person, you should be offended. You should feel, uh, you know, you have a fragile ego. Um, you know, you can't handle it. You can't face the truth. You, you, you have to be coddled in society. You need to pick me up. You know, you need to be baby. You need to be babysat. These are the people who are telling you this, guys. His defense attorney, uh, Brian Kennedy, filed a motion to have the portraits of white judges removed from the courtroom where his client's trial is scheduled. Bernhardt's decision to remove the portraits of white judges from the courtroom comes as some Americans are questioning why statues and monuments of racist figures are allowed to stand in government buildings. Again, because this is history. I don't mind being in a government building and seeing the history of government, right? Okay, there used to be racist people that ran our government. That's fine, right? I don't, I, you know, at the end of the day, you know, hopefully that's not where we are right now in society. But at the same time, why don't you build on top of that, right? I'm pretty sure they have portraits of Obama in the White House. They're going to build a lot of things after Obama because he was the first black president. So at the end of the day, they're going to build on top of it. And then people will get a complete understanding of history. This is where we came from. This is where we're going. I think that's beautiful. I think that's beautiful, right? And I think people of the future should not forget about that. Because again, if you forget about it, you're doomed to repeat it. Given the nation's current moment of racial reckoning, uh, Bernhard wrote in his opinion that the court needed to uh, con consider how the portraits of mostly white judges would be perceived by black and brown people. Again, People trying to speak for black people and brown people and throw them all in the same bucket and say, you should be offended by this. We control how you should think, how you should feel about something. We're not going to give you an opportunity to develop your own feelings and have your own thoughts. 
we have to think for you. Quote, to the public seeking justice uh, inside the courtrooms, thus the sea of portraits of white judges can best yield uh, indifference and at worst, uh, logically, a lack of confidence at, that the judiciary is there to preside equally no matter the race of the participants, he wrote. <clears throat> now, my rebuttal to that is that if you know that the court is there to preside equally no matter the race, why does it matter? Why does it matter? Right? If that's your true goal, your true intentions, why does it matter what portraits are on the wall? Okay? To me, if that's your intent, then that's what you should focus on. As long as the, the criminal justice system is truly equal, no matter the race, that's all that really matters. I don't mind preserving the history, right? That, that's just my opinion on that. Furthermore, if the criminal justice system is not just and it's not equal, which some people argue that it's not, then maybe you should put more efforts and focus into making it equal and making it just rather than just trying to take down portraits and try to get a perception of that maybe you should work on the actual criminal justice system instead of trying to put lipstick on a pig kennedy applauded bernhardt's ruling but doing so he added was just a start quote this opinion is important because it's a continuing conversation about the symbols we use both inside and outside our courthouses kennedy uh, wrote in an email to cnn all right, guys, so you guys can read the rest of the article. Basically, what it says is that some of the portraits that was there uh, was portraits of Confederate um, leaders and uh, slave owners and that they had already removed those. Uh, mostly the ones that are still there are former judges. I'm thinking that they probably going to go ahead and remove those people, too, because they was too uber white and thus, um, you know, offending black people in court. Now, keep in mind, guys, what he said was that this is just a start. This is just a start. And this is the problem with the woke left, right? They say, oh, you know, we're just trying to, uh, we're not trying to get rid of history. We just want to put it in its proper place. We want to put it in a museum. And that's what they say. That's the start. Until somebody gets offended by being in a museum, they get offended by actually existing, period. There's a lot of people out here that want to erase history completely. They want to get rid of it. They want nothing to do with what they feel is so-called white supremacy and white dominance. Any type of symbols for that is problematic for them. Now, the issue is, is that for these woke leftists, this issue is going to bite them in the butt because nobody is perfect. And a lot of these people that they put up in place of these slave owners and these Confederate generals and these other white judges and white people that they don't like, they don't feel was perfect. We're not perfect. Nobody is perfect. And the more woke we get, the more progressive we get socially, what will happen is, is that the standard will become so high that we should honor nobody. Nobody. No street should be named after anybody. No statue should be up. Nothing. We will have a society that is bare of history because of that. So that's my prediction, right? And again, this is the start. I feel that the great reset is a part of this, particularly in America. It's, a part, it's about resetting history, resetting society so that it's not quote unquote white dominated. Again, instead of trying to build on history, they want to erase history. My solution is to build. Let's build on history. Let's tell the whole story. Let's not tell part of the story, but they don't want to tell the whole story. They just want to tell the story that they feel is appropriate. But let me know what you guys think. Is this just another continuation of the far left going too far or do you think this is just let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black assertive perspective peace